Tokyo is an asynchronous runtime for the Rust programming language that provides the building blocks needed for writing efficient and scalable network applications. To get started with Tokyo, we can create a new project using Cargo and add the Tokyo crate to the cargo.toml. With Tokyo installed, we can create an instance of the Tokyo runtime in our main function. Next, we call our run function, which returns a future. We'll discuss futures in more detail later on, but you can think of them similar to promises in Node or other languages. We can then pass this future into the block on function of the runtime. The future executes and calls the code inside of the run function, which will sleep for one second. Pretty simple. This is a really basic example of using the async and await keywords, but nothing much is happening here. We could have quite easily done this synchronously. Let's add something else to spice it up a little. Now our run function is going to call two other functions. First, our sleeper function, which is basically the same code we had before. And our reader function, which is loading a data file, reading to the end and telling us how many bytes are in that file. When we run this code, we can see again it's running synchronously. Nothing special. Let's make a change and actually wrap these two functions in the join function of the Tokyo module. In the output, we can now see that both functions occurred at the same time, aka concurrently. To further explain this point, let's go ahead and do this again, but calling the reader function 10 times. Pretty cool. For reference, here's how long this takes if we perform this synchronously, almost double the amount of time due to the lack of concurrency. So that's pretty great. Maybe we should just be using Tokyo for everything, right? Well, not exactly. Tokyo is good for non-blocking I.O., which is when an application is waiting on operations such as reading from a file or network data. However, there are situations where the bottleneck of an application is CPU, or performance bound. Tokyo uses a single thread for its main event loop. Therefore, if any tasks are performing heavy CPU-based operations, this will actually slow down the other asynchronous tasks that are running. To demonstrate this, I've gone ahead and added in a Fibonacci calculation to each of the reader calls, which is expensive on the CPU. By adding in this calculation, we've dramatically increased the runtime of our application. Fortunately, there is a way to get the performance back. We can use the task module of the Tokyo framework to spawn a task, which will run in a different thread. And just like that, we're performing again. Oh, I forgot to mention, a little quality of life improvement. We can actually use the Tokyo main macro instead of creating a new instance of the runtime. This turns our main function into an async function that returns a future. Neat. Okay, so now you're a master of asynchronous Rust, it's probably time to discuss futures and how they differ from promises. So it may not be very visible from the code that we've written, but we've been interacting with a type known as futures this whole time. A future represents a computation that will be completed in the future. They are the essential building blocks of asynchronous code. When compared to other languages, they are most like a promise. However, with one major difference. They are lazy. This means they don't execute as soon as you create them, but instead only once they are explicitly polled by the Tokyo runtime, which is typically when the await keyword is used. Let's highlight this with an example. Let's call our sleeper function twice using the await keyword each time. Here we get a log output for each execution of the function. Now, if we remove the await keyword from the first sleeper call, there's only a single execution that takes place. The first execution never happens. The compiler does actually give us a warning, which is nice to see. Whilst this might seem off, there's a good reason for this approach. It improves performance of the runtime as it avoids having to constantly check whether a future is ready to execute. Well, what if you want to execute the future but not wait around for its completion? Sort of like a fire and forget. Well, we can do this using the Tokyo spawn method. Futures are returned implicitly whenever we use the async keyword, which basically acts as syntactical sugar. It also allows you to use the await keyword, which can only be called inside of an async function. Now that we've covered the basics of Tokyo and futures, it's worth a brief look at some of the other features that the package provides. I'll be doing more in-depth videos on each of these in the future, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss them. The Tokyo Sync module provides functionality for communication and synchronization across concurrent tasks. It provides both async counterparts to the synchronization types of the standard library, such as mutex, read write locks, semaphores, and also provides some novel types used for cross task communication, known as channels. 
These are similar to channels that you would find in other languages such as Go, but basically allow data to be sent from one asynchronous task to another. The Net module provides low-level network primitives for working with TCP and UDP sockets asynchronously. Some examples of the provided type are a TCP listener for accepting TCP connections as a server, or a TCP socket for making connections to the server. The Tokyo Task module provides asynchronous green threads. Green threads are similar to operating system threads, but are much more lightweight and are managed by the Tokyo runtime instead. These are similar to Go's GoRoutines, Kotlin's CoRoutines, or Erlang or Alexa's processors. The FS module provides asynchronous APIs for working with the file system. It includes functions for reading and writing files, as well as for managing directories, symbolic links, and permissions. The process module provides asynchronous process management. It includes functions for spawning child processes as well as communicating with them through pipes. Using the process module, one can spawn other processes and wait for them in an asynchronous non-blocking manner. The signal module provides asynchronous handling of operating system signals, such as interrupts, allowing for graceful termination of an application. The time module provides asynchronous APIs for working with time. It includes functions for delaying execution as well as scheduling periodic tasks. The module also has support for setting timeouts on futures using the timeout function, which can be useful for cancellation of long-running execution. And the Tokyo test macro provides the ability to test asynchronous code concurrently. By using the macro with a test case, we're able to use the async and await keyword with our test functions. With all of this functionality provided by the Tokyo framework, it's possible to create IO-based applications that are both performant and scalable. I hope this video helped to encourage you to play around with asynchronous programming in Rust and inspired you for your next project.